My name is Hannah and this is my no buy year. All right, I'm doing it. I'm filming it. I'm attempting to film a video about all the things that I'm absolutely sure I would have bought this year if I hadn't been on a no buy and consequently how much money I can be confident that I have saved during my no buy year. Right off the bat, I want to say it's hard to know. It's hard to know for sure. And if you are doing a no buy for 2019, especially if you're doing it on a YouTube channel, I highly recommend making it a practice during your no buy to write down everything that you come across that you feel certain that you would be buying if you weren't on a no buy. Because if I had done that, I would have had a much easier time putting this video together and I would have been able to put it together with a lot more confidence and a lot more precision than what I'm about to present to you. I didn't think to do that. I didn't have the prescience to keep a running list. So I just sat down and I went back through a bunch of my Will I Buy It videos. I went back through my regrets video. I, I went back through a bunch of my videos that are kind of relevant to this topic and I started making a list. I also went through my Sephora loves list, my wish lister, and I just went through my memories of what has been released this year and I made this list. The things on this list are things about which I had that serious, true, yearning feeling. For all of these items, there was a moment over the course of 2018, a moment at which if my no buy had suddenly mysteriously ended for some reason, I definitely would have bought the thing. There are so many things that I would have bought this year, and many of them are small and utilitarian things like a replacement kitchen tongs, new underwear, an extra laptop cord so I didn't have to keep unplugging mine and plugging it into other wall sockets. There were like a thousand moments over the course of the year when I thought, oh, I could really use X, and then I didn't do what I would have formally done, which was to hop on Amazon and just order it and not worry about the 10 or 15 or 30 or $70 that it would have cost me. And again, I wish I had written all of that stuff down. I wish I had kept a really careful track of it, but I didn't. And it would be such an imprecise project to try to go back and catalog literally all of that stuff that I decided that to make this video, I would just keep it to makeup. I did jot down a list of other unnecessary things, makeup being one category of unnecessary things. It's a little bit easier to remember the splurgy things that I lusted after this year in other categories like homewares and clothing. So I did jot down a little list of those and I will touch on them at the end of the video. So the end result of this video, the final number, will be a relatively conservative estimate of what I would have spent during the year of 2018 if I hadn't been on a no buy. But because of that, I feel like I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I did save this amount of money. I'm pretty sure that I saved quite a lot more than just this amount of money, but this conservative estimate is for sure. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. The first one on the list is the Melt Gemini palette. That's a $58 palette. I really, really, really was wooed by the mustards in that palette. And I'm also pretty sure that the sense of scarcity surrounding the palette, the fact that it sold out right away and then came back and then sold out again, and the fact that we thought that it wasn't going to come back again, I, I think that that might have easily tricked a pre-no-buy Hannah into shelling out the $58 for this palette. When it launched, those greens and mustards were just so the thing. And they still kind of are. And I still feel like I don't have a mustard shadow that I truly, truly love. I still look at that palette. I still look at the website. And I'm curious about whether or not it will come back in stock. That one really got me. It didn't get my actual money, but emotionally and spiritually, it got me. The ubiquitous, the by now famous on my channel, Dior Backstage Face Palette for $45. I saw this in store when I was in Sephora, just swatching around. I had to go there. Oh, I was picking up my sunscreen samples. And then I just sort of looked around out of curiosity. I came across this palette and I basically broke out into a cold sweat while I was holding it. It was relatively far through my no buy year. I mean, it was towards the middle of the end basically and I didn't feel like there was a danger that I would buy it but I had that moment where I was like if it weren't for my no buy I would 
I would be buying this. I would be in line right now to buy this. It's just so incredibly beautiful. It's still on my wish list. If you saw my video about the things that are actually on my shopping list for next year, it's one of the things on my maybes list, my wants list. And on that same trip to Sephora, I swatched the Hourglass Scattered Light Eyeshadow, which had pretty much just come out. $29 for one little pot of eyeshadow, and I wanted it so, so badly. I am confident beyond a shadow of a doubt that on that trip to Sephora, or one around the same time, on a no, no buy year, year, what am I talking about? If it had been a normal year, on that same trip to Sephora, I would have bought both of those things. I would have bought the $45 palette and the $29 hourglass scattered light eyeshadow, the like taupey one. I don't even really want that anymore, but I would have bought it. Ooh, this is one that I never talked about on my channel. It sort of came and went in the beauty world, and I lusted after it silently. The NARS Air Dem collab. Do you guys remember that? It was like back in March that they released the images, maybe? March or April, and it came out in May, I think. And the packaging was absolutely stunning. I really love NARS packaging, and this was like a very, very, very pale blue that you could barely tell wasn't white and it had these photorealistic flowers on it, and I just felt like I had designed it myself, like my soul had designed it. And then there was this gorgeous lip palette, like a lip powder palette, which really rang my vintage loving bells. It just felt like a beautiful, classic, strange thing that I was convinced would look amazing on me and fit perfectly with my aesthetic. I would have bought that in a hot second if I hadn't been on a no-buy and it was $49. The Kevin Aquan Neo Blush in Rose Cliff for $38. I talked about this during a Do I Want It video as something that I really, really wanted. I talked about it again in my What Will I Buy During 2019 video as something that I have completely forgotten about and have no desire to buy. The Armani Eye Tints. I had to put these on here because I had one of those episodes, one of those obsessive episodes, during which I realized how amazing the one that I have is, and it made me want to buy more and more. The one that I have, I'll show it to you. It is a liquid eyeshadow product, but it's kind of like pre Stila Glitter and Glow. It's not super glittery, but it has very, very, very fine micro shimmers that are super sophisticated in their shimmer. And I got really into wearing this, I think I might have even shopped my stash for it earlier in the year, and I wore it several days in a row and I wore it to some evening events, and every time I wore it, once it got kind of lived in and grungy and a little oily on my lids, it would take on this like really lovely, special, shimmery, classy, glamorous look. And I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, wow, it looks so pretty. My eyelids look so pretty. And instead of just being really excited that I own this one, that made me want to find out what other colors I might want, which is like, why do we do that? I was, the thing that had happened was that I found out how awesome a product was that I already own. And my first instinct, my reaction to that was to rush to sephora.com and look at the product and look at all the other colors. And of course I wanted two other colors. I wanted flannel, which is like a iridescent gray purpley one, and jade, which is a really beautiful green one. I was in a frenzy. Obviously because it was my no-buy, it was just a fact-finding mission, but if I hadn't been on a no-buy, I would have bought those suckers on that exact day. As soon as I realized how awesome this one was, I would have bought more instead of just continuing to love what I have, which is what I did do. They are $40 each. That would have been $80 down the drain. Well, not down the drain. I would have had some pretty eyeshadows, but given the fact that I already have one and I don't need more and I have so much eyeshadow and I don't need more, it would have been kind of down the drain. The Smashbox Buildable Cheek Brush. I was gripped by a desire for this blush brush at some point during the year. I was convinced that I needed it. I was convinced that I was going to buy it on January 1st. No longer am I planning to buy it. I'm very happy with my current blush brushes. That was a $36 brush that I would have bought. 
The Sunday Riley Influencer Foundation, I also talked about this recently in my What Will I Buy video, $42. I was just fascinated by the fact that Sunday Riley had released a foundation and I was annoyed that I was on a no buy and I couldn't try it. It got terrible reviews and it has since been discontinued, so I guess I dodged a bullet there. The NARS Atomic Blonde Eye and Cheek Palette, $69. I didn't talk about this on my channel either, but I am kind of a sucker for NARS. NARS is one of those brands that I'm just checking for, absolutely checking for all the time. And I'm tempted by most of what they release just because there's something about the aesthetic of the brand, the formulas, the way they sell themselves, the packaging. The more I learn about what suckers me in, the less I'm able to be suckered, but I still, my little antennas go up when NARS releases something beautiful. And this was very beautiful. It wouldn't have been practical for me because the cheek, there was like a dark bronzer in there, dark for me. I mean, almost all bronzer is dark for me. I use basically a highlighter as a bronzer. <laughs> I use like blush as a bronzer, but it's two huge pans, one highlight and one bronzer. And then I think four or five little eyeshadows across the top. And so the majority of the real estate in that palette was taken up by these two cheek products, one of which wouldn't have worked for me. It was the most impractical impulse, the desire to buy that product. But there was something about the bronzes, I'm a sucker for bronze, and there was something about the bronzes across the top, those eyeshadows. Also, Mariah Leonard did a video with NARS, <clears throat> a sponsored video where she was demoing that palette, and she just gets me the way she applies eyeshadow, her aesthetic, the way she talks about it. It just got me. I wanted it, and then after I saw Mariah's video, I, I think I would have bought it if I hadn't been on a no-buy. I, I don't think that I would. I, I know myself. I know my past self. I know that I would. The Natasha Denona Camel Palette. Do you guys remember when I was absolutely convinced that I really, really wanted that? In retrospect now, I see that it actually wasn't an ideal palette for me because the browns, the mid-tone browns are really quite warm. And I feel like I'm swimming in warm browns. I have so many of them, warm brown transition shades. And all I ever want is like a slightly cool or super, super neutral taupe transition shade. And I just don't need more warm browns in my collection. They're not what I reach for most of the time. So that palette would have been actually idiotic for me to buy. I had magical thinking about it. I wanted it to be cooler than it was. Some of the swatches online looked cooler and I was hoping that the swatches were right and the pictures were wrong. And then I saw it in store and I saw that the swatches had been wrong and the pictures were right. And I still clung to my magical thinking. I still in my mind was like, well, maybe when I put on my eyes, it will look cooler. Maybe it actually is perfect. I wanted to want it and I wanted it to be perfect. And in a normal year, past Hannah would have let that desire to want it be a good enough reason to buy it. I'm so glad I didn't do that because I would probably never have used those warm brown transition shades. I would have just used the one bronze, the one eyeshadow. I would have been buying a $50 five pan palette for one bronze eyeshadow. So that's $48 that I'm glad I didn't spend. There's also the Natasha Denona Mini Star Palette for $25. I'm fairly confident that I wouldn't have been able to bring myself to buy the full-size star palette this year, even though it's something that I wanted going into the year and that I had wanted for a very long time. But the Mini Star Palette, when that came out, I was like, no-brainer. I would have bought it the second that it released. The Stila Glitter and Glow set. So this is one, actually I did put this on my Christmas wish list. Stila's been coming out with these Glitter and Glow sets and I bought one last November, I think, a set of three minis and I've gotten such good use out of that. I had Diamond Dust, Kitten Karma, and Smoky Storm, I think, and I used Diamond Dust actually all the way up. I pretty much used it up. It's also probably getting a little dried out. It's not like there's no glitter left in the tube, but I'm pretty much scraping the bottom of the barrel. It was good value for me. To me, it was, because I got the variety of colors and I felt like I was able to actually get really, really good use out of those little minis. The other two are still do doing pretty well. They're still going strong, but when they started releasing new sets with new minis, with new colors that I don't have, I, I know for sure that I would not have been able to resist buying at least one of those sets when they started releasing. So 
those sets are I think $25 and <laughs> they would have been mine. One or two of them probably would have been mine. And there was one Stila cream shimmer and glow, so not the glitter and glows, but the ones that are packaged the same but that are the shimmers. One of those that I went through a period of wanting <laughs> so badly. It's like the grungy olive green one. It's called La Douce. I would have bought that. I absolutely would have bought that when they released that new line and I saw that color. I would have popped it right in my cart and placed an order. No doubt about it. I saw Hannah from Smoky Glow recently talking about this product. Actually, she said that the glitter and glows are amazing, but that she hates the glimmer and glows. And the way that she talked about it and how badly she says they perform took away any last shred of desire to buy that product if there were still any shreds hanging around. So thanks for that, Hannah. The Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in Telluride. So I was buying at Sephora a birthday present, I believe, for a friend a couple of months ago, and I used 100 of my points to get one of the point perks, which was a little mini of the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in the color Babe. And the formula impressed me so much. It impressed me so much, and it has continued to impress me. It is like an enduringly impressive formula that I really enjoy wearing and I would have bought like two or three more after having tried that one if it hadn't been a no buy and the one color that I'm absolutely sure that I would have gotten was Telluride. I think I probably would have gotten the palest one as well, the one called Bear I believe. But Telluride without a doubt would have been mine in a normal year. I would have placed an order as soon as I realized how much I love that formula. The Fenty Diamond Balm, $38, and the Fenty Diamond Milk Gloss Balm, $18. When that release dropped, I knew in my heart that I, I would have been buying it instantly if it were a different kind of year. I'm kind of a sucker for Fenty. I, I don't like everything that she releases. Sorry, Stuffy is barking. I'm, I'm just gonna keep going, I'm sorry. It's not my dog, he's a barker. I don't like every single thing that Fenty releases, but I like the brand so much that I think old Hannah, like my old mindset, I was sort of in the mindset of buying anything that Fenty released that I did really like, partly because I liked it and partly because it was Fenty, if that makes sense. So that's a brand that I'm definitely checking for. And I'm, I'm always kind of hoping, or I was always kind of hoping that the next Fenty release would be something that I would really want. I want to want what Fenty releases because I want to buy Fenty. Or again, that's how I was. I'm a little bit more careful now. I'll be a little bit more careful going forward. But when this release released, I wanted it so bad. I was like, that's for me. Like, that's my Fenty release, that very, very shiny, glittery, highlighter thing and yet another color of the gloss balm in an exciting kind of milky shiny color. I mean, I I just was like, it would have been a no-brainer again, like many of these things. And like many of them, I'm not sure I'm gonna buy it next year. Okay, the next thing on my list is eyeshadow singles from indie brands and more magnetic palettes. I conservatively estimated that I would have spent something around $100 on this. I have been trolling indie brand websites literally all year, lusting after a bunch of single shadows. I think if I hadn't put the brakes on myself with my no buy year, I would have become a voracious collector of single shadows this year because I was just starting to get into singles at the end of 2017, and then my no buy year just kind of cut me off at the pass. But I know what would have happened. I would have just gotten all these magnetic palettes and all of these singles, and I would be constantly building my own palettes and all that stuff. And I am still planning to up my singles game a little bit in 2019, but I'm not going to go ham the way that it would have gone if I hadn't done a no buy year. The Nude Sticks Magnetic Matte Lip Color in Boho, $24. This is something that I tried on in a Sephora when I was there with a friend, helping her buy some makeup for herself. And the color was just like so grungy and edgy and yet worked for my skin tone. And I fell in love with it instantly when I put it on my face. I would have bought it on that trip if it hadn't been for my no buy. But as I continued to wear it over the course of the rest of the evening, because we like went to see a movie and had dinner and stuff, it really dried out my lips. It made my lips kind of dry. And at this point, I don't think I 
would want to buy that. I might check out some of Nude Stick's other formulas, but it would have been a situation where I put it on, bought it instantly, and then possibly didn't wear it very often because it's kind of a drying formula for me. So yet another bullet dodged. Dose of Colors new eyeshadow palette, the one called Pretty Cool. That is something that I would have bought. And I haven't done a do I want it or a will I buy it. I'm going to start doing them more regularly, I hope, next year. But I haven't done one in a really long time, so I haven't had the chance to talk about this palette. But that is like my dream neutrals palette. Those cool neutrals are what I depend on, what I lean on. And in spite of my what feels to me like a relatively extensive eyeshadow collection, I just don't have very many cool tone transition shades like that, like those really, really perfect ones. So I am tempted by Pretty Cool. I think it would potentially be like the perfect support palette for all of my looks. But I don't know. I might just do better to buy like the one perfect taupe single from Makeup Geek or something rather than getting like a whole other little palette. It remains to be seen what I will do about that one. Needless to say, I would have already bought it if it hadn't been my no buy year. The ColourPop Good Sport palette, $16. I said that I didn't like the looks of that when it first came out and then once I got a closer look at the product shots, I really liked the looks of it and I was like, I want it. And I would have bought it. I really liked those mossy, grungy colors that were in there. I would have bought it and depotted it and added all of those eyeshadows to my singles. But I didn't do that because it was my no-buy year. And I also would have bought some ColourPop's Lux Lippies. That was a new formula this year. $7 each. I bet that what would have happened is that I would have taken that release as an opportunity to try out a bunch of colors and undertones that I have never tried. So I might have ordered like a very, very pale peachy nude, like a concealer lips color. I might have ordered like the navy blue. I might have tried out some more, I don't know, like mid-tone reds that I've never tried. I just remember looking at all of the, the rainbow of colors that they released in that lip formula and thinking like, oh yeah, I could easily order, you know, 10 of these and none of them would be color dupes for what I already own. And it would be an exciting chance to experiment with color for me at a low price of $7 per lipstick. But of course, if you order 10, then that's $70. And that's not a low price. And I also don't want 10 more lipsticks. So I'm glad that that didn't happen. But that's potentially what would have happened in a different time, in a different year, to a different Hannah. So those were all of the makeup products that I could think of right now off the top of my head that I am absolutely sure without a shadow of a doubt I would have purchased in 2018. I'm sure that I didn't remember everything. And some of you who have been watching my channel might even be able to remember things that I've said over the course of the year that I would have bought that I didn't remember and that I didn't include in this list. So again, this is just kind of like a baseline. Like this is just the core of what I'm sure that I would have bought. And the total of all of that makeup is $866. So at the very least, I saved that amount on makeup alone. My current total spent at Sephora, like I, I checked my yearly spend at Sephora the same way that I did in my earlier video this year where I talked about how I'd already made VIB Rouge. So my current total spend at Sephora is $1,260. But if you subtract from that all of the things that I bought for other people, it goes down to $940, which is actually below Rouge status, which is kind of exciting. So I did spend some hundreds of dollars at Sephora this year on gifts for other people. And if you look at what I spent only on myself, I personally myself didn't quite make Rouge this year, but, you know, I almost did. And really it's... it's what's $940 compared to $1,000, you know, it's, it's still a lot of money. But even then, my hypothetical lowest possible expenditure at Sephora for 2018, if it hadn't been a no-buy year, so this is adding together the makeup that I would have bought with the amount of skincare that I actually did buy, the $940. If you add that together, that's $1,806. So, that's like the minimum of what I absolutely would have spent at Sephora 
if it hadn't been a no by year, just at Sephora. And the dramatic slowdown in the amount that I spent on skincare during the second half of the year is definitely because of the no by year. So I had spent over $1,000 at Sephora by halfway through the year, and then I spent almost no more than that during the second half of the year because my habits changed. My skincare routine changed dramatically, but it only changed dramatically because my no by year allowed me to see how much I was actually spending on skincare. And there is a video about that. It might not be up yet. I'm not sure when it's going up, but the video about how my no by changed my skincare routine is around here somewhere. So if I hadn't stopped spending so much on skincare halfway through the year because of my no buy, then that $940 could have easily been twice that much, plus the $866 on makeup. Overall, I can easily tell just by looking at these numbers that my yearly spend on Sephora for this year would have been well over $2,000, if not into the $3,000 realm. So a quick rundown on clothes because I don't want this video to get too long, but I do want to let you know. Just off the top of my head, jotting down clothes and accessories that I had that lustful feeling about, that I felt the pain because I really, really wanted, that I felt like I kind of could have afforded, although in retrospect, I know now that that actually isn't true. These are the things, the other things that I'm sure that I would have bought in the realm of the closet. Two Aritzia crop tops, they were on sale. They would have been $60 for two. At the time, I was like, I can't believe I'm not allowed to buy these. It's so unjust, they're my perfect tops. Didn't buy them, $60. Aritzia also makes these beautiful pants called the Paradon Pant that are kind of like my perfect lightweight work day pants. And I have one pair that I believe I received as a gift last year, and then this year they came out with the same pant in a bunch of neutral colors, and I feel pretty confident that I probably would have bought them in black and probably in taupe as well, and maybe one other color as well. They're expensive pants, they're $70 each. I mean, not wildly expensive, but it's, it's not a budget pant. That would have been probably close to $200 on one or two pairs of those pants, if not more. Aritzia also makes a scarf, a blanket scarf, that I already own one of. It's my favorite scarf, and I feel pretty confident I would not have been able to resist the temptation to buy that scarf in a second color when they released for the holiday season, so that would have been another $88. When my wallet was stolen, I would have replaced it instantly with the same kind of wallet, the Hobo Lauren wallet, that would have been $120. When it got really hot, I really, really wanted more t-shirts. I felt like I didn't have enough lightweight t-shirts. I am absolutely sure that I would have bought a bunch more tees and tanks this year if I hadn't been on a no-buy. I'm conservatively estimating that if I had found them at a low price, it would have been something like $40 or $50. Replacement sneakers, I would have purchased them by now, another hundred dollars. Tango shoes, I have never made it through a year. In, in over a decade of being a tango dancer, I have never made it through a year without buying at least one new pair of tango shoes, and I'm sure I wouldn't have made it through 2018 either without buying a new pair of tango shoes. They are expensive, they are $220 a pair, most brands, so if I had only purchased one, conservatively estimating that I would have only purchased one new pair of Tango shoes, that's $220. I would definitely have bought a couple of more pairs of J. Crew earrings. I like J. Crew because the posts are hypoallergenic and I have very, very, very sensitive ears. I've found almost no earrings that I can wear without my ears getting really inflamed and painful. And among the ones that I can wear, it's hard to find like super chunky statement editorial earrings. So that's why I'm always talking about J. Crew earrings because they are like the crossover of the Venn diagram between earrings that I can wear and earrings that I like the style of. And yeah, they released a bunch lately that I like a lot. I would have probably spent over $100 on those, especially during the recent sales. There's this bag that I really like by this brand, Danzelette. It's like a kind of edgy independent brand, I think. I'll throw a picture of it up on the screen, but the mini Phoebe bag in this gorgeous coral color. I was considering putting on my list next year, my list of things to save up for, 
but then it went on sale. It went down from maybe close to $400 down to $266, which is still a lot of money, but compared to the price of the bag, it seems like an amazing deal. And when I saw that it had gone on sale, I was like, oh my God, I wish I could buy it. Cause I, I feel like I would have easily been able to talk myself into spending the $266. I wanted it so much, I still do. I want the bag so much that it would have felt worth it. It would have felt worth it to put it on a credit card to be able to take advantage of that deal. So I'm pretty sure I would have bought that bag at that moment. So th that's just a random rundown of, again, the very core of items that I'm sure that I would have bought, not even dallying in the territory of things I probably would have bought. The total there is $1,134. A couple of housewares. I would have bought that beautiful woven wall hanging, that piece of art by my family friend that I was lusting after in February. That was $100. Would have bought that. Would have bought the perch for Sadie, $30. Would have bought plants. I would have continued buying house plants. I cannot imagine that I would have spent less than $200 on house plants over the course of 2018 if I hadn't been on a no buy. So that's another $330. A couple random other things that I turned up on my lists when I was going through my old videos, the Moroccan oil dry texture spray. I had a sample of that and fell in love with it. It's $28, which at this point I'm not sure I'll ever spend. That seems just like too much. It just seems like too much for something that I go through kind of quickly. But I would have been buying it all year. I would have probably bought it twice by now if I hadn't been on a no buy. So that would have been two purchases of a $28 texture spray. I also would have bought that Summer Fridays jet lag mask, that $48 mask that I talked about in one of my Do I Want It videos. That was kind of a flash in the pan. No one ever talks about it anymore, but it was very, very trendy when it first came out. And I'm a sucker for a trendy mask, or I used to be, I used to be. I no longer really mask. That's been a, an interesting side effect of my no buy year. Anyway, that's another $76. So just that rundown, again, that kind of light sketch of a few things that I'm sure that I would have bought, that's another $1,540. So if you add that to the makeup, the total is $2,406. But that's just off the top of my head, and that's only if I had been very, very good. If I had been, compared to my old behavior, if I had kind of reined it in, that is what the shape of things would have been. If I had been trying the baby steps method this year, if I had been trying to be better, that's probably what I would have spent. But I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been. My guess is that for every dollar that I can confidently say that I would have spent, there's at least another dollar out there that I don't even know that I would have spent. If I had spent the year going to the mall to relax on the weekends, stopping by Zara after work, trolling eBay, obsessing over designer shoes, engaging in all of the old behaviors that I used to engage in, if I had kept engaging in all of those behaviors, then the list of things that I truly wanted to buy in the moment would be double, triple, quadruple what it currently is. The scariest part of all of this is that even though I have been able to save and sock away a little bit of money every month over the last couple of months since I paid off my credit card in September, it's now the end of 2018 and I don't have $2,406. What extra money I did have went towards paying off my credit card. I started out the year in debt and even after getting out of debt, I haven't been able to save the amount that I'm sure I would have spent if I hadn't done this project. What that means is that without this project, I would be at least $2,406 in credit card debt right now, and almost certainly much, much more than that because I would have been buying more things than the things that I was able to list. And because without this project, I would have been buying things with the money that I had instead of using that money to pay off the debt with which I entered the year. I mean, I would have been making payments. I would have been unhappy about the balance on my credit card and I would have been in some way trying to pay it off. I would have been wanting to try to pay it off, but 
I don't think that my unhappiness with that balance and my fears and my frustrations with getting further into debt would have been more powerful than my compulsion to buy these things. I, I think that my compulsion to buy these things would have won and I would have ended up in further credit card debt and I wouldn't have paid off my credit card because I needed a cold turkey project to get my brain to change and to get my behavior to actually change. I am an intelligent, mature adult woman, so it seems crazy to accuse myself of having almost spent so much money this past year in such a misguided way. But I know myself, I know what my habits were like, and I know how badly I wanted each and every one of these things at some point over the course of 2018. So I know what would have happened without the no buy year. Needless to say, I am not planning to go out and buy all of the things that were on this list in 2019 when my no buy is over. I actually can't. I am a working creative, I'm a small business owner, I don't have that kind of money. I don't know what made me think before that I did. And I am very grateful as ever for this shift in my lifestyle and my mindset. I'm not going to extend my no buy, but I am going to put in place a new project, a new project that will be announced soon that will help me stay on track and help me continue the lifestyle of appreciation for the things that I already own. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you will remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Bye.